I would make a dig from the Mishnah. Ha'im ha'ya chayev. However, if the person was chayev in his bracha, afilu im yata mighty. Even if he was already yata his chayev, he could still be mighty other people in their chayev. As we said, this excludes Birch Samazain. And why is that? So Rav Laya, he explains, Shani hi Birch Samazain. Birch Samazain is different. The Chsim Vat says regarding benching, Ve'achalta ve'savata uve'rachta se'shem alaykecha. And what do we learn from here? Misha achal hu yivarech. Specifically, the person that ate, he's the one that has to bench. Regarding other brachas, a person doesn't necessarily have to make that bracha. But benching, the Pasuk says, Ve'achalta uve'rachta. So if you ate, you have to bench. And the Gemara Lamza, I know, Abbas Antab continues talking about this. Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yudu and Pazi, Hava Masivin, they were sitting and discussing this. Amru, they Said, let me stop her. Wouldn't it be logical to say regarding Kriyashma, she hey call Echad Ve'Echad Mashanim Bepiv that every person would have to say Kriyashma on his own, and somebody who was already yet is Chiv of Shema would not be able to be mighty somebody? And why is that? Because the pasuk of Shema says Vishinantam. Vishinantam means you shall express it, you shall say it, and somebody else cannot be mighty you. And furthermore, let me stop her with Tefila she hey call Echad Ve'Echad Mevakesh Racham Al Atzmai. Wouldn't it be logical to say that by Tefila as well, by Shema Na Esrei, that every single person on their own should be asking for Racham for themselves? Themselves, and they can't be yotzei the chiyav of Shmuel Esrei by hearing it from somebody else. Now those two statements are relevant to what we were discussing previously. Now the next statement doesn't have any connection other than that it was said by Rabbi Yosi. Ma bein sukkah, ma bein lulav. What's the reason for the following difference between sukkah and lulav? That sukkah ina tu unabracha elo leili yantef harishan belvad. A person only has to make a bracha on the sukkah leishev basukkah the first night of yantef, and that's it. The rest of yantef he doesn't have to make a leishev at all. And currently this is the shita of the Yerushalmi because obviously we know that that's not so. That's not how we act nowadays. Whereas lulav tone bracha. Shiva, a person has to make a bracha on lulav all seven days of Sukkot. Every single day, a person makes a separate bracha on their lulav. So Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Acha, Havu Yasvin, they were sitting. Amrin, they said, Ma bein Sukkot, Ma bein lulav. What's the reason for this difference? That's because Sukkot neheges beleles uva yamim. Sukkot, a person sits in the Sukkot both at night and at day, and therefore there's no interruption of the mitzvah, so he can make a bracha the first night of Sukkot, and that works for the entirety of Sukkot. Whereas lulav and yunai galba yamim, a person only shakes lulav during the day, so there's an interruption of the nighttime, so that's why there has to be a brand new bracha every single day. Now, Hazar of Yaakov during Maya, Rabbi Yaakov of the South asked, Hari Talmud Taira, Noig Belelis Kibayamim, a person has to learn Taira day and night, and we know that every single morning a person has to make a brand new Berchsa Taira, but why so? It should be like Sukkah. He makes a bracha once, and that should work forever. Tumar says, No, my Kedain, what's the comparison? Sukkah, Efshalal of Atel, is he able to be Mavatal the Mitzvah of Sukkah? The Mitzvah of Sukkah is Chal 24 hours a day. Even when he's sleeping, there's a Mitzvah of Sukkah. So since that Mitzvah is uninterrupted, one bracha can suffice for the entirety of Sukkahs. Whereas Talmud Taira, Efshalal Shalal of is it possible not to mivatel Talmud Torah? Which means, is it possible not to have an interruption in learning? When a person goes to sleep, they're not learning. So since there is interruptions in the middle of Talmud Torah, a person has to make a brand new bracha. And now going back to what we were discussing previously, Tani the Brisa says, Aval Amru, in truth they said, this is similar to the Bavli's Be'emes Amru, in truth they said, Isham of Rechas Labayla, a woman could bench for her husband. She could be mighty her husband in his chiv of benching if he's not able to bench. The Evid Mavarch Rabbi, or an Evid is able to bench for his master if his master is unable to bench. The Katan Aviv, and a Katan is able to bench for his father. The Gemar pauses and asks, Loichain Amr of Acha Bashem Rabbi Yesi Breb Nairai. Did Rav Acha say the following? Kol Sha Amru Bakatan. Everything they said regarding a Katan, meaning all the mitzvahs they said that a Katan does, that's only Kedel Lachanchai, to Machanechem in mitzvahs, but not that the Katan himself has a Chiyov, that he's able to be mighty other people in their chiyuv, so how could it be that a katan can bench for his father? So Gemara says, Tifter ba'aynachre and amen. This could be explained as talking about where the father answered amen after his son benched, so since the father said amen, it's as if he himself benched. And Lama Chesam Ralph on top, Kaida Tanin Taman, this is like what we learned over there. Mishahaya Evra Isha Katan Makron Isai, someone has an Evid, a woman, or a katan saying halal for him, Aynachre and Mashain Aymen. He has to repeat after them what they say. Now back in the day, when they said halal, the chazan said halal, and everyone just listened and was yotzei with their chiyof. This is referring to a person who's unable to say halal on his own, so he had this evid, ishor, katan, saying halal to him. Since it's not a bracha, he can't say amen to be yotzei's chiyof. He would have to repeat after them. They say some of halal, he repeats it after them, so on and so forth. However, with the loy me'era, a curse should be on him. And he deserves this curse because he's demeaning Hashem by having a person who isn't a chayiv help him be yotzei's chiyof. And now the Gemara just concludes the brass that had started, that a woman could bench for her husband and an evid could bench for his master. Haval amru, but chachamim said, tavay me'era le- Ben Esrim should sarach Ben Eser, a curse should be on someone who's 20, meaning an adult, who needs someone who's 10 years old, meaning who needs a katan, or somebody who's not chayiv, to help him be yotzei his chiyov. And why is that? Well, because this fellow is chayiv to learn Tyra, and he doesn't even know how to bench, whereas this woman or Evid, who are potter from Tyra, they learned how to bench. And again, as the Brashas says, Tavay Me'era, and as we say, he should be ashamed of himself. We're going to stop here for the day, pick up tomorrow with Halacha Dalid. For now, everyone should have a wonderful day. Wonderful day.